I can't resist. I got to dance a little bit with that music going back. <laughs> I'm like, Peter's a very professional person. I hope he's gonna not going to think I'm too weird if I start dancing when we kick this thing off here. Today. <laughs> we, we can dance. You should, you know, luckily there's a countdown. We could all behave before we went right. live, right? Right. <laughs> Well, good morning, everyone. I want to welcome you to this edition of Social Media Pie, where I bring on inspiring people to inform and educate you. And look who I've got with me here today. I've got Chancellor Peter Provenzano, who is with us, joining us from Oakland Community College. Peter, how are you doing this morning? I'm doing great, Brenda. I just really appreciate uh, being here on this. It's a beautiful day today. And yeah. uh, it's great to be uh, the leader of such an incredible organization like Oakland Community College. Well, great. Well, I am really looking forward to the conversation here today. Before we get started, Peter, though, what I'd like to do is welcome our audience. We have folks that are going to be joining us online here today, and we are live on three networks right now. We're on LinkedIn, we're on Facebook, and we are on YouTube. So I would love it if you happen to be watching right now, if you could do me a favor, just give this video a like or add a comment. And if you would like to add a comment, we'd love to see that. Let us know where in the world you're watching from. I mean, chances are you're watching from home, but where is home for you? I'm in Metro Detroit. I'm in Fraser, Michigan. And Peter, is it, does it look like you're in your office today? Is that right? I, I, yeah, I'm actually in my office uh, in uh, uh, a district office in Bloomfield Hills in Oakland County, Michigan. Wonderful. And I see, I think I'm going to start to pull some comments on as we get started with the introductions. And I already see one of your colleagues, Melissa Tilly, is joining us. Hey, Melissa, how are you doing hey, today? <laughs> so great. So before we get into the conversation here today, what I'd like to do is give Peter a few minutes. Um, if you could, Peter, tell us a little bit about who you are and a little bit about Oakland Community College. And then we'll jump into this conversation about why community college makes sense. Great. So Peter Provenzano, I'm chancellor at Oakland Community College. Uh, chancellor is really just, a, I guess, a fancy name for president of mm -hmm. the college. So I oversee uh, a, a team of people um, that uh, at Oakland Community College, and we have five campuses mm -hmm. uh, across Oakland County. Uh, we're one of the largest ca uh, colleges and uh, community colleges in the state of Michigan. And we've been in existence mm -hmm. for over 50 years, providing mm -hmm. incredible services to the community. And uh, just love to, to have the conversation today about why community colleges make so much sense right now, especially during a pandemic. Yeah, and, and really great conversation. I wanna ask for one one question though, Oakland Community College, and for those of you who are watching, if you're not familiar with Oakland Community College is in Oakland County, Michigan, but Peter, you you draw students from different areas. It's not just Oakland County, you draw people from Macomb County and, and from other areas as too, is that correct? We do, primarily our students come from Oakland County, obviously, um, but we do draw students really from, from all over the state and even all over the country especially yeah. now as our classes are remote. So, uh, you know, you can take a, an Oakland Community College class online from anywhere in the world. And so we're, we're drawing from a much larger uh, region than just Oakland County. Yeah, good. Well, I'm very excited about this conversation. So Peter and I, we actually know each other from, um, you know, my past life, I worked in, in corporate and I worked for Walsh College and Walsh College was one of the transfer institutions for Oakland Community College students. So I worked very closely with, with Peter's marketing department there. So having kind of an understanding of, of what's been happening in the industry, Peter. And there's been this conversation for many years about the value of a college education. And, you know, I think community colleges are so relevant. And now there's this whole other change in the conversation with COVID, you know, because people are not necessarily going away to school. Um, they're staying home and then they're starting to evaluate what am I paying for? And um, I, I think that's a nice kind of lead into this conversation for today. Um, why does community college make sense right now? I mean, maybe even more than ever. So let's get started with that conversation. Well, so I so I think that community colleges have always made sense. Um, yeah. And when you really look back to the 60s when community colleges were being created all across the nation, uh, they were being created so that there would be a college that was there for the community. That's why they came up with the name community college. Mm -hmm. And the idea was to provide a high quality education at an affordable price uh, for students so that more uh, students, more residents within the county would be able to um, take short term training or uh, uh, take uh, college classes at an affordable price and then transfer to a university. And so it's it's amazing. We've been doing this for over 50 years at Oakland Community College. And it just so happens just by our sheer nature um, during the pandemic, we are perfectly positioned to allow students to take classes uh, online uh, to keep students safe and to keep them on track. In, front, in fact, a funny story a few months ago, I was walking around the neighborhood and had a um, had a neighbor come up to me and said, you know, you're you work at Oakland Community College, don't you? And I said, sure. Mm -hmm. And uh, they said, you know, we're out uh, my my son and daughter 
uh, they were thinking about uh, trying to, you know, they're wrestling with the decision back in the summer as to whether or not they wanted to return to their campus dorm at XYZ University. Mm-hmm. And they were really apprehensive about it. And so they were checking out Open Community College. And this neighbor said to me, did you realize that my son or daughter can take the same classes at Open Community College for the fraction of the price and they can stay home and transfer to that university? And I said, yeah, doing that for 50 years. So, you know, believe it or not, this isn't something community colleges were not created uh, for the pandemic. We've been around for a long time. We've always been uh, right here for the community when the community needs us most. So I'm really very excited about being part of this organization. So ask, I just want to ask a question there. You talked about online education and online classes, and this is something that OCC has been doing prior to COVID. And I, and I think other institutions had to kind of go, whoa, wait a minute, we got to like reconfigure, recalibrate. And even, you know, when things first started happening here in, in, in Michigan in March and April, and, and everybody had to kind of like figure out what are we going to do? Is this like a three week thing? Or we had no idea we'd be here today. But so yeah. tell me a little bit about that. I mean, were you guys already offering online classes at that point? And then what did that transition period look like for you? So, so we were already offering a lot of online classes, but we had mostly face to face classes like most community yeah. colleges. And literally within a week and a half, our faculty and our entire team converted over 1,500 face-to-face wow. classes to remote classes. And this was done by over 600 instructors. And so kudos to the team. They really know how to get it done. Yes. <laughs> um, and so this was just a Herculean effort. Yeah. Um, and we did it so successfully. And what we heard from our students was they really appreciated the flexibility to stay home, stay safe, and stay on track. Yeah. There's all kinds of uncertainty out there. And so uh, we, we, successfully converted those uh, classes over in the um, winter semester in March. Mm -hmm. Um, I have to admit at the time when we were doing this, we were planning on, well, should we, should we finish out the winter semester online? Or do we think that the, you know, mid winter semester, we'll be able to go back to face to face. And it quickly became apparent that all of winter was going to be online. And Mm -hmm. shortly thereafter, we made the decision because we were doing things so successfully um, that the entire summer would be online. Uh, mm-hmm. And one of the things that allowed us to uh, to do this is that we've also moved all of our student support services. So counseling, mm-hmm. libraries, um, ASC, everything is all online. So you mm-hmm. truly can have uh, the same quality, the same experience as you did a year ago, face to face online. And our students are, are, are enjoying it. Uh, what we're hearing from them is they really appreciate it. It's working for them. They enjoy the flexibility. They enjoy the, the certainty. Uh, as mm-hmm. they try to plan their schedules. And so we're going to keep it going. Um, we've uh, So the fall is mostly uh, remote. And now mm-hmm. we're also making the announcement that it looks like winter 2021 mm-hmm. will be the same as the fall, mostly remote with some hybrid classes for the very intensive laboratory environments like culinary and automotive right. servicing and, and welding. Although I, a big shout out to our um, our uh, continuing, our, our, um, our technical trades programs. They have done a phenomenal job of converting as much of the face-to-face learning because inherently a lot of that is hands-on and face-to-face. They've done a phenomenal job of of transferring as much as they can to online. Quick story, Claude Townsend, who's uh, uh, one of our faculty in our automotive services area, came up with a creative way back in March and April where, um, because we we just couldn't physically get get on the campus at the time, Um, he would work from his own car in his own garage and FaceTime or Zoom or whatever that was. And then students oh, were at their home mm-hmm. on their own cars and, and learning how to fix cars and do things in real time. And so that just, just to, yeah. I love telling stories about our faculty in ways that they have uh, really been creative to, to really keep things going and keep our students learning. Is that what they were doing before? Were they bringing their, their the students' cars into the shops and, and working on them before? Or sometimes, they were- sometimes they were, yeah. Okay. So we have some uh, some vehicles that they can work on, but that is part okay. of the learning experience where students are able to work and fix on their own cars or their or their family cars. Um, and so it's really a win-win. Not only are they learning, but they're they're helping their family and friends out. Yeah, and, and what I love what you're talking about too, there's so many different career paths. There's not like one career path that is deemed the right career path. I mean, it's really what it's what's right for you, right, Peter? And, and we have a 15 year old son right now and he's kind of struggling with, you know, what do I do after high school? What do I do with my life? And um, I imagine there's many people and in, in this whole thing with COVID is probably causing some confusion. You know, what do I want to do after I graduate high school? Do I want to even go to a four year? I'm not 
going there in person, or maybe I do go there and then we're seeing some lockdowns and things that are happening right now. But maybe I do want to go to a community college, but I don't want to, I don't know what I want to be when I grow up. Right. Yeah. So what, what is your, what are your response to that? If a student's, uh, you know, are, are high school graduates, like, I don't know what I want to do. Do I even go to school? I don't know what, what I want to be. You know, I, get asked that que- I get asked that yeah. question all the time from students. And um, my, my, gen- my immediate answer is um, I'm in my mid forties. Right. And I'm still trying to figure out what I want to do. <laughs> when I grow up, right? yeah. So you're, like, you're looking for ideas too. When they ask you, like, well, what do you want to be? <laughs> it's exa- and, and, and see, and that's the point is that, and I tell them that it's about lifelong learning. You really do not know where life is going to take you. So I, I went to school. Uh, I did become an accountant. I, uh, I'm a CPA. I thought that I was going to be a partner at a, um, at a CPA firm the rest of my life. And, you know, my life took me into to government. And before you know it, now I'm working for a community college as a CFO. And now I'm leading that community college. I can tell you that in college, I never thought that I would be doing what I'm doing now. But life is about continuous learning and your experiences build on, on itself. And so the point is, is that you know, I think the pandemic has really amped up the anxiety on this conversation. I think you're right, Brenda. But even before the pandemic, students have feel this tremendous amount of pressure in high school to figure out what they're going to do with the rest of their life oh, and yeah. to get a degree in it. And, and they feel like they really need to make that decision before they graduate from high school. And the reality is, is whatever, there's a, a percentage where I've seen, it's like 80, like 60% of um, the students being trained at, in colleges or universities will be doing something completely different. Wow. They'll be in a job in their life that doesn't exist today. And so yeah. the point is, is the world's are ever changing. And so whatever you think you're gonna start out doing, it's probably gonna change anyway. So the point is you don't have to figure it all out. Just get started. And I always tell students, look at what you really love. Where do you, what do you gravitate towards? If you love math and science, then being a doctor or a scientist or a, a science teacher makes all the sense in the world and you start on that, on that track. If, if college isn't you know, necessary for you or a bachelor's degree, the thought of a bachelor's degree right now uh, really just frightens you, but you love working with your hands, you can make a great living working on cars, being a welder. Um, mm-hmm. There's huge demand for those jobs and they're very high paying. And it doesn't mean that you're gonna be a welder or uh, an auto technician for the rest of your life. You may end up uh, working your way up in, in whatever corporation that you're at and going back for a bachelor's degree after you receive your, your certificate or your associate's degree in something that's a little more hands-on. And here's the key, those pathways make a lot of sense because oftentimes the employer is now paying for you to, to receive that bachelor's degree. So sure. life is, it's, so education, I always refer to it as a, as a super highway with all of these entrance ramps and exit ramps. And we're all you know traveling on, on different paths at different times. And it's all about just finding your passion and uh, finding your path. And um, I, I think the so I think that relieves. Or hopefully, when I talk to students, I'm able to ease their mind that they don't have to have it all figured out. Just get started and take some basic classes at a community college. Uh, take your general education credits, or just take a class of something that you love and see where it leads. I mean, you you guys have a really impressive catalog, and I think everything's online now, so you can kind of look through the catalog and just look at something that seems interesting and you can kind of dip your toe in the water right and yes. and maybe it is welding and maybe it is cooking and maybe it's maybe it is business or mathematics or economics or some other field nursing you know a lot of a lot of different paths that are out there um but the good thing is and, and you, you made a really good point when you when you talk to anybody nowadays and you say what did you think you were going to be when you were in high school you know what when, when you were little you might have said oh i want to be a princess or a fireman or whatever but when yeah. we get to the high school like, i never said a princess just no, so. yeah I was, I was gonna say maybe prince or king <laughs> or i don't know but um but you, you you were talking about you wanted to work as a partner in a cpa firm and i in high school if you had asked me i, I was taking german for four years and i liked my marketing classes i'm like international business right and that's what i went to school for and then I think it was my second year in, I, I took a marketing class and everything kind of lit up for me. And I'm like, wow, this is it for me. But there's so many people where you talk to, they're, they're in, the path they ended up in wasn't the same, but I think the way that um, colleges and especially community colleges have structured their curriculum, you get to sample a lot of different things before you actually commit, right? To the degree or to the path you wanna pursue. You do, and it's key. So community colleges are unique in the sense that uh, because you're, you're receiving a high quality education at affordable price, you have a little more flexibility um, to try different classes um, to, to explore. And so that's something that we really like giving students the ability to do. 
And that's, you know, speaking of, of high quality, that's another, uh, you know, issue that I, I really like to talk about is, you know, beca just because a community college is, uh, has an affordable tuition rate, it's a fraction of the cost of many universities, it does not mean that you have to sacrifice quality. If anything, it's the opposite. We tend to have very small class sizes um, mm -hmm. and a high quality curriculum. We would have to, otherwise those credits would not transfer the way they do to universities. Uh, in fact, what's really interesting is I, I was asked by a, another television reporter, tell me one really unique thing about community colleges that you, you think that many of the residents uh, aren't, aren't aware of. And mm -hmm. I said, you know, one of the things that surprised me is, is when I came to community college was how many of our uh, faculty teach full time at the university. So these are wow. very similar, similar, you know, same hey. curriculum, yeah. same instructor, wow. same quality, maybe a smaller, you know, smaller class size at a fraction of the price. And so universities um, see that. Mm -hmm. um, and as there's more and more competition and a decreasing population, um, universities have had to become uh, more competitive uh, and you see them marketing and advertising to students all the time. Yeah. They are now realizing that community colleges are great partners for them because we are tremendous feeders of students. Um, I, the local universities, it's not unusual for 40 or 50% of their graduates um, uh, that they're transferring in from somewhere else, from community colleges. Okay. And so, you know, universities really see community colleges as a partner uh, to create a competitive advantage because together, uh, you know, the time that you spend at a community college um, with the low in-district tuition rates that we have, yeah. if you combine that with the cost of the university, you're able to receive a four-year degree between the two of us at a fraction of the cost, and it really helps our university partners become very competitive. That's awesome. And I remember when I was going through um, my bachelor's degree, I mean, I, I did go away to school. Um, I, I wish I would have stayed home and gone through community college first because you do incur a lot of debt. And I did yeah. have a small scholarship. My parents helped me out as much as they could, but I did have to take out a lot of student loan debt. Um, and it takes you many, many, many years to pay that off, especially if you're not making the Boku bucks with your first job, which you often aren't, right? Um, and I, you know, I remember coming home on semester break and in the summer and taking classes here and there. And then he started kind of looking at, gosh, I'm saving a lot of money doing this route. Um, but now here's the irony, Peter, right, is that a lot of these kids aren't going away to school. They're staying home and they're, you know, they're, they maybe have selected to go to university and they're paying that university rate, but they're not getting the university experience. Are you seeing more students coming to community college because of what's happening with COVID now? Or are they choosing OCC at a greater rate than they used to? We're seeing more and more, we refer to them as guest students. So students okay. that um, are enrolled at a university um, and they're choosing community colleges for the, for the exact reasons that you had stated. There's all of this uncertainty out there. Um, they may or may not be allowed back at their campus. They wanna stay mm -hmm. on track uh, with their educational journey. And so they're looking to community colleges uh, to continue taking classes, knowing that not only are they going to save a ton of money in the meantime, but those classes are going to transfer over those universities. And I think that is so important um, because there's there's so many students, unfortunately, out there that are talking about a gap year. And I, and, and I have to yeah. talk about this because, I, you know, I've had a lot of students come to me and say, you know, there's so much uncertainty. Um, I, I think I'm just going to take a year off. And I, I tell yeah. them, no, that's the wrong. No, one, the wrong one year, leads, right? to three, year it leads to five and then you're 52 and still working on your bachelor's degree. The person watching is knowing who I'm talking about. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> but it happens. Life happens, right? But um, life the, the year, it, it, you don't start thinking you're not going to complete. You just say, start by saying, I'm going to take one year, right? I'm going to take one year and think about things. Yeah. And so just, mm -hmm. you know, I always say, look, you know, there's a lot of uncertainty. You may even have, you know, we're talking about university or, you know, guest students. The reality is, is there are a lot of um, working adults out there. And, mm -hmm. and I'll tell you that over 70% of our uh, students... Right. Um, are part time, and so they're they're working full time. They may be a parent full time yeah. um, during COVID. They may be home, uh, trying to balance working from home, students or their uh, their children learning from home, yeah. and so they're asking themselves, how in the world am I going to continue on with my education journey? And so all of a sudden, a gap year, just kind of taking the year off, um, seems really attractive. And one of the things that I says, you know, to your point, Brenda. You, you, you know, stay in the game, right? Yeah. Don't don't sit on the bench because once you sit on that bench, you, you never, it's so hard to get back in the game. You lose the so, momentum a little bit, I think, don't you? I mean, you're like, well, maybe I didn't. Like. But even like, I liked your point, like take a class that you're interested in. You don't have to class. like force classes that you don't want to take anymore. Like take one, 
take yes. one, right? Take and, and one then, class and just keep that progress. Yeah. That and we, we're, we've been talking here about, um, you know, community college and why it makes sense right now for those of you that are joining us a little bit late. And, you know, sometimes when we think about a college student, we're thinking about the traditional college student, you know, that 18, 19 year old um, who's going away to school or maybe chooses to stay through community college first before we, but there's this whole population of adult learners as well, Peter, aren't there? Um, that aren't the 18 year olds, they might be the 25 year olds or the 52 year olds or, you know, other ages who are maybe thinking about getting back into completing their degree, investigating other paths, you know, maybe they are in their mid forties and they realize, hey, I don't think I wanna do this anymore. What else should I be looking at instead? So are you catering to that crowd as well and, and those adult learners who maybe aren't the traditional college yeah. student? We, we, we not, I mean, I would say not only do we cater, we specialize in that, right? So when you mm -hmm. look at the reason that community colleges were created, it was not only for the transfer students, which is about 50%, of our students, but mm -hmm. it was also, t t the idea was to have a college that was part of the community that adults could take short-term training to upskill, to mm -hmm. improve um, their employment, their employability. And so that is something that we specialize in. We have a workforce development team uh, that can customize uh, courses for many, and, and we do that for many employers. Um, but what we're finding is, you know, we'll, we'll go into companies and uh, we ask them about what it is, how can we help? What yeah. types of training do you need? And what we're finding is the majority of the training they need, we already provide. Uh, in mm -hmm. fact, a quick story, just a few months ago, we went to, we visited a, a major company in uh, Oakland County, sat down with their human resource team and their human resource team said, look, we went around the whole company and I have a long list of um, of topics and areas that we would love to send our employees to you for training. Can you create these, can you create curriculum around all of this? And we sat down and Brent, I'm gonna tell you, I bet you 90% of that list, we already do. And the other 10% awesome. we could easily customize. And so mm -hmm. that, you know, that is one of the reasons why we are partnering so close with our other university partners, as well as Oakland County. I don't know if you've heard, um, mm -hmm. Oakland County has announced a uh, 80 by 30 initiative. And what that means is that by 2030, we would like, our goal is to have 80% of working adults degreed or credentialed. And this is absolutely critical for the economy. Um, we know that if you are skilled or you are credentialed uh, in, in, in a function, you're going to make more money. And businesses, they come where the talent is. And so if we're going to keep the momentum that Oakland County has had and has enjoyed over the, the, the many years now, we need to really stretch ourselves and we've set the bar high to, to achieve 80%, but we think it's absolutely critical. So OCC is committed to not only helping, you know, we, we typically society thinks of a traditional student, 18 to 24. We, we specialize in that, but we also are very committed uh, and special, and, and, and to your word was catering to right. that adult learner. And that actually bring, uh, brings up another interesting point. So the governor, here's another opportunity for those adult learners. Uh, the governor just recently announced uh, the Futures for Frontliners program where the state of Michigan will pay for you uh, if you are a frontline worker during the pandemic, uh, I think it was March through through the end of June, okay. you will be able to go to a community college for free to receive wow. a credential or an associate's degree. You have That's to great. apply with the state of Michigan by the end of December, and then you have four years to use that money to get that degree. This is a phenomenal program and it's just a tremendous uh, advantage mm -hmm. to all of our frontline workers. And I think it's just a great way to give back to them and really mm -hmm. help them upskill and uh, improve their employability. That's amazing. And I had heard a little bit about that. What I want to do, Peter, is I'll, I'll work with, I'll try to get that link from a member of your team and then I will include it in the playback of this video in great. case there's anybody who's interested in applying with the, the state of Michigan um, for that opportunity. I think that's amazing. And and why not? If there's if there's money out there, if there's funding out there for you, why not take advantage of that? Um, and sometimes the it's the, the first step is the hardest, like where do I apply? So let's let's help you through that process, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah awesome. Absolutely. So what I'd like to do is I think we've got we've got a flurry of comments that are coming in here, Peter. And I want to take take a look and see who's been online with us today. So we're gonna shift gears a little bit and I'm gonna open the floor now for your questions. So if you're watching us right now, um, if you have a question for Peter, drop it in the comments. If you have a question about community college, you know. You're kind of evaluating that option either for yourself, maybe for your son or daughter or another family member, and you have some questions um, for Peter, this is the time, you know, ask the question. So I'm gonna pull up, and I think I've got a couple more of your team members. They did a really good job. Well, of course, you know, 
I'm the the spouse of one of your team members. And I told him, I said, you guys better be online watching and supporting Peter. So he's on, he's in the other line. I heard him screaming when I was commenting about the 52 year old person working on his degree. <laughs> but that happens. I mean, you know, he started off in one path and then he went, you know, and he was pursuing his dream in every um, stage of the game. And that's what we do. You know, we, we pursue things and then we, we shift gears a little bit. So, um, so it looks like, did you just celebrate your sixth worth anniversary at OCC? I, I, yeah. Actually I did. Yes. Yeah, September. I think it was September 1st, believe it or not. Time really goes quickly. Well, congratulations. That's yeah. wonderful. And we do have folks watching from not just Michigan, but we've got people like uh, Gabriel who are watching us from, from Texas. And then locally, we've got some other folks watching from Madison Heights and other areas, North Carolina. So we're reaching people from all around. And uh, what I heard you say too, Peter, is you can enroll at OCC even if you're not in Michigan, right? You can even look at yes. um, offerings that you guys offer there as yeah. well. All right, so Lori, I think another member of your team, and I have to just, um, I'm, I'm just gonna take just a moment and go fangirl on you here, Peter, because I think you're an amazing leader. Um, you're genuine, you do such a great job of leading the institution at Oakland Community College, and I see that in um, in your interviews. I mean, I've talked to you in person, and you're, you're, you're just genuine through and through, and I think you always have the best interests of your institution at heart, and I just wanna echo what Lori is saying here. I don't work for you, Peter, Lori does, so maybe she has to say nice things, I don't have to say nice things to you, but I, I say, I call them like I see them, Peter, and I, I completely agree with Lori's comment on here. Thank you, thank you, Brenda. I really, just really appreciate all the, the support of OCC that you've, you've given us over the years as well, so. Yeah. We've got a great husband, too. Yeah, he's, he's okay, he's a good guy. And we've got Christopher Jensen watching us from West Bloomfield on here. Um, so Chris, actually, here's my husband. Here he is, guys. This is the, the man behind the woman right here, Christopher Miller, um, in the other room right now, um, shouting in the background. We've got Cindy online with us. Thanks, Cindy, for watching. And let's see here. Uh, Boston, we've got someone from Boston watching us here. Wow. So you did, um, somebody commented, I'm not sure who this person is because it says LinkedIn user. So the, the person who's commenting on here right now, you probably have something in your um, public profile privacy settings where you have it a little bit locked down. So I can't see who you are, but they have commented. It's probably somebody who works on your team, I'm guessing, but you renovated your auto labs at Auburn Hills. Is that correct? We, we did. Um, so we have actually at OCC, that, that's a great point. Um, we have uh, we, we have a five-year capital plan. Mm -hmm. um, actually, it's it's a 10-year capital plan that, w that we do internally here. Um, actually, the, the secret is I actually have... Um, Bobby Remius, who's our, our amazing uh, CFO, we, we have a 20-year capital plan just because I like the plan so much, but we, that <laughs> when you go out that far, it gets a little crazy. But the point is, is that we are committed um, over at least the next 10 years of going across all of our, our five campuses and um, making renovations and modernize the buildings. Um, and all of this is budgeted for. Um, it is so important that we, we continue to update our facilities and keep them modernized. Um, one of the more recent renovations was we renovated our auto lab, our, um, our welding lab, our, uh, our collision lab. Uh, and so they are absolutely fantastic. And um, there's never been a better time to be a student in one of those, those programs. Um, they are state of the art. We have partnerships with Chrysler, the Mopar CAP program. Um, we have, uh, really tremendous partnerships also with our, our robotics lab and CNC machining. So we use Herco machines in our CNC machining lab. Those machines are provided to us for free from Herco. These are $50,000, $80,000 machines. I think we have like 10 of them. And they're free because we have a partnership with Herco where they use us as a showroom. And it's a win-win because they use us as a showroom and our students are, learned, uh, are, are learning on the latest technology. In fact, oftentimes they go into the industry and the machines that they've learned on at OCC are like leaps ahead of what they actually uh, use in industry. So uh, great. Thank you for bringing that up. Very good point. Yeah. That's great. looks like a lot of great renovations going on over there. Yes. Um, and and I we think have a Building C. I, I should mention yeah. Building C is underway. In fact, yeah. I'm going to take a tour in a couple of days. We have a brand new science building in uh, Auburn Hills that is well underway. We anticipate that oh, maybe a year from now it'll all be done. Okay, wonderful, good to hear. And I, I think the person who commented might be Dan Genuine because Chris was commenting back on Dan. So Dan, I'll reach out to you and I'll tell you how to adjust that setting on there so we can we can see your face on here. Um, and a couple other comments on here. And Melissa agrees, you know, very few, if any people end up what they thought they would, would be doing. And I'm curious for people that are watching today, add a comment below and tell us like when you graduated high school, what did you think you're gonna be doing? versus what are you doing now? So for me, like I said, I thought it was gonna be international business 
and here I am, a marketing consultant. I mean, it's like completely different from what I had anticipated. Um, but yeah, you guys, if you want to drop your comment below, I love, you know, when we get people involved in the conversation here. So feel free to drop that in there. Uh, let's see, Lori had a comment on here to, you know, get to know yourself. And, and I think this is advice to freshmen, you know, people who are figuring out what do you want to do? Uh, do you like working with people or things? And that's a really great point. I'm curious, Peter, I'm putting you a little bit on the spot here, but do you know how many degree programs or certificate paths you have at well, Oakland Community College? We, we have like nearly a hundred. Um, no. Yeah, so there's there's quite a few. Okay, and I know it's, it's not, and to Lori's point too, it's not just um, the traditional paths. You certainly can look at the traditional paths, but then there's a lot of the continuing education and the hands-on paths that you were talking about as well. Um, I remember, uh, years and years ago, I had a friend whose grandmother would talk about when you're dating people and she would say, every pot has its lid. You know, you, there's a match for you out there. And I think it's the same when we think about careers, you know, every person, you know, has their, their ideal job. And that's not, my ideal job is not the same as your ideal job, Peter. And, and our career paths are as individualistic as we are as human beings, right? Yeah. And I, and I think, you know, sometimes I think if we shift the way that we think about jobs. Um, you know, one of the things is I look back at, at all of my careers or all of my jobs, you know, there was one commonality um, where, you know, I love working with people. I love managing people. Um, that's something that I gravitate towards. And so you really have to find that common thread. And I think it's a talent that you bring to many different jobs, many different industries. And I think sometimes we do ourselves a disservice trying to pick one industry when we really should identify what's our talent. And that mm -hmm. talent, you know, bleeds through many, many different industries. And there's so many opportunities for you to um, exercise that talent. Yeah. And I, I'm kind of popping up some different comments up on screen here. I see one coming in from Marissa who talks about, looks like she did that path that you're talking about earlier, which was um, taking some of her electives at, at OCC and then transferring. And you, you, I'm kind of echoing back on what you said earlier, Peter. It sounds like you were you were built as a transfer institution originally. Am I, am I summarizing that correctly? Well, both a transfer as well as short-term training, mm -hmm. uh, you know, for associate degrees as well as uh, certificates. So really okay. both. Okay, very good. And um, another question or comment, I guess this is from Lori, community colleges give high school students the opportunity to explore and gain real work experience secure foundation and remain debt free. So I'm just dropping this on in case you guys are interested. Admissions is the email. Um, so this is a question coming from Chris. I'm sure he knows that you know the answer, Peter, or else I don't think he would ask you the question here. <laughs> but is OCC part of the Michigan Futures for Frontliners program? And, and if so, could you describe for us what that is? Yeah, so, it, so I touched on it a little bit earlier. Futures for Frontliners is mm -hmm. the uh, new program that was announced by uh, Governor Whitmer that our uh, frontline workers during the pandemic will receive a free community college tuition. Uh, they have four years to use this money. They have until December to apply with the state of Michigan. We are a um, we are partnering with the, the state on doing this. Visit our website. There's a, uh, in fact, I think in the, uh, in the hero slide up on the top of the scrolling area, um, there is a section that you can click on with more information. There's a link on there that takes you directly to the state of Michigan's website where you can apply for the Futures for Frontliners program. It's just a phenomenal program. I hope that um, all of our, our Oakland County residents take advantage of it. Okay. And I'm actually, now that you talk about your website, I'm going to go to the website. So you said it's in the, it's in the, one of the. Yep, right there, actually, right there. Oh, there Great tuition for, if I click on the um, apply, then it'll take me to that page. Awesome. So I'm going to, I actually, Melissa just commented on it, but I'm also going to drag it, drag, drag and drop it into the commentary later on. So you guys can click on it if you're interested in, in visiting that web page. So very great to see here too. Um, so I'm just kind of scrolling through and I want to make sure I get all of your questions and comments. And so I'm going to scroll back down and just see if there's any questions that have come in here um, from folks. And to remind you guys, this is your opportunity. If you have any questions for Peter, or you have any questions about community college, if you've attended community college, and I see a couple of people have commented on that as well. And Cindy Van Dam just commented that her daughter finished two associates without any debt and has a great paying job. I mean, that's the goal, right? Um, that we're starting our career off without the debt because once you start to get behind, it's really hard to dig out of that, especially with coming out of college and then having not a great paying job initially because you're entry level, having to pay off that debt, you're at a little bit of a disadvantage there. Um, so thank you, Cindy, for sharing that. Um, you know, 
in and it's it's a very common thing for people to look at uh, that path for community college. Another comment from Laura here, um, you know, Laura's, I think, kind of going through this career evolution process, uh, changed major and transfer schools many times, um, finally found her plan. So great job for you, Laura. And um, that's what it's all about, you know, continuing to investigate and look at different options in there. Um, Brenda, I see a question here we may have missed. Uh, it was about uh, student activities. And I, and I should touch on that a little bit, if you don't mind. Um, sure, please go ahead. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, our, so not only are our student services uh, mm -hmm. fully online, but we are moving more and more student activities online. We have some really phenomenal student groups, and so I encourage all of our students to join them. Uh, but there's another aspect uh, to having a social life, right? That I think students oftentimes- Sorry, we have to do um, the Wilson, remember from Home Improvement? We gotta look over the, the fence. Oh, now. there you go, okay, yeah. That's, that? <laughs> this is like a fence, right? <laughs> I'll pull it down. There we go. <laughs> it's a, there you go. So uh, this is just part of being on LinkedIn Live. Huh? That's great. Right. Yeah. Um, you, can, you just go with it, Peter. Just come along. Uh, with I'm me. with you. I'm with you. <laughs> um, and so uh, one of the things that I, I, I want to make sure that students recognize too is that um, they don't underestimate the value of working. So we have. So at Oak Community College, um, the way that we are geared, most of our students work full time and they take classes part time. And okay. so one of the things that we're seeing university students do uh, is they're taking classes online at OCC and because they miss that social interaction of the campus um, and that campus life, they're they're involved online with our student groups, but they're reaching out to us and through some of our career placement or, or, or through our career placement division and they are working part time for companies. They're doing internships. So there's a whole social aspect of college and going to college which also includes working. And when you really think about the value of having a job, it, it really sets you apart. When you graduate with a degree and you have uh, job experience, especially in the industry that you're heading into, it separates you from everyone else. Uh, it, it really does, it differentiates you. So I just wanna to make sure that I mention that as well, because I know there's a lot of students that are looking to stay social. Yeah, no, that's a really good point. And it, it's hard. I mean, it's 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 the irony is like uh, the generation today is growing up with phone in hand, right? They're they're growing up with tablets and technology, but there's something to be said with human interaction, you know, and, and even like I'm mean, in our house and when we have family dinner, not very often, but I'm like, no devices at the table. You need to learn to interact with one another and look at me in my eyeballs and have a conversation. And it's the same thing with um, student organizations. I mean, they want to have that interaction. So they've, you know, hopefully been able to shift to some online activities. And um, it's it's been great to see the evolution of Zoom throughout this, hasn't it, Peter? Like how it's been, <laughs> is that, now is, are you guys using Zoom as your platform or as a go-to meeting? What do you use for your- We do, uh, so in, for, we use Zoom um, and uh, many of our students are using Zoom. And I, I had an, a number, uh, this is months old, but I, I want to say we had like over 80,000 wow. Zoom sessions in, it was like the month of March or April when we first began, just to kind of give you some context of how much activity is going on out there just at Oakland Community College online. Yeah, that's amazing. And, you know, we've, we've made it happen. And, and I think back in the day, I remember working at Walsh, there was a, some resistance back in the day about online learning and can we deliver education effectively online. Um, and there are some, you know, but it's similar in, in corporations and in corporate America, they said, we don't want people to work from home because we don't know if they're doing the work. Now it's like we had no choice because of Corona, right? To to shift yeah. to online, online work and working from home and online learning as well. Um, and it's probably been, you know, a bit of a bumpy process. Um, I know trying to convert everything quickly where, um, you know, that wasn't the plan. It wasn't, you know, I know you talked about the 20 year plan. That wasn't probably in the 20 year plan. What about a pandemic that we have to work from home and yeah. learn from home? That probably wasn't in there, but now it is, right? It's probably being right. um, because the reality is we've experienced this once and we'll learn from this and we'll grow stronger and we'll move on, right, Peter? I, I agree. I, you know, and I think, and I can speak for Open Community College, I, I think we'll be stronger uh, because of this. I, it, it's full steam ahead at OCC. Um, yeah. And um, you know, I think there's a real silver lining. While it, it's very, uh, it's very a very difficult time, and a lot of people are struggling, um, there are things that we're gonna we're gonna be better from it. Um, yeah. And back to your point uh, about working from home, um, you know, we talked about that. We knew that that was kind of the future that more and more people would be working from home. Um, there were certain areas that we didn't think it could ever work well. We, there were mm -hmm. certain 
student services that we didn't think we could put online. Um, but when we were forced to, we're now looking at it saying, hey, this kind of works. This really works well. And students, it's more convenient for them. And one of the things that I didn't touch on is uh, a real silver lining through this whole thing is that we're creating more flexibility, more choices for students, especially yeah. students who really struggle with transportation. Um, they're able to take classes, as I mentioned, from anywhere in the world. So you, you don't necessarily need a car uh, or to, to take the bus to come to class. Now you have the ability to do it from home. And uh, community colleges, including OCC, are working really hard to help those that do not have access to technology. We're giving them access to technology. So um, using CARES Act money, we gave away, uh, our goal is to give away up to 3,500 laptops for oh, this fall great. semester, which is fantastic. Yeah. Um, you know, our foundation has been very supportive in helping students, connecting them with internet access as well as computers. And then now, even though our campuses are closed to, to classes, mm -hmm. uh, we are allowing students to come in and use our common areas if they need to log on to our Wi-Fi so that they can oh, have a safe, a safe environment to learn from. And it can get a little crowded in those homes. And uh, I can tell you from my own perspective at home, the, uh, the Wi-Fi signal with all four of us yeah. online is, is a little stretch sometimes. So Yeah. And even like in our, in our pre-call guys, before Peter and I went live, I kind of said, Hey, technology is what it is. So I said, if, if my Wi-Fi hicks up, hiccups and kicks me off, just stay here. I'm like, you're going to be driving the bus on this until I come back or vice versa. If you lose it, you know, come back on, um, just come back on as well. And we, I think this has taught us a lot about patience, perseverance and creativity as well in, in terms of both approaches and, and what you do when the unexpected happens. Cause now we know it's bound to happen right, at some point. It, it, it really is. And, and I think that's the one thing is that it, um, through this pandemic, um, yeah. we've learned to kind of roll with the punches, as you said, and, um, you know, um, and I've always, I, my, my phrase is we've got this together. We've got this. Yeah, that's great. Well, as we start to wrap the conversation here today, Peter, what I want to do is I'm actually going to pull up your LinkedIn profile up on screen here. And are you open to to folks who want to connect with you on LinkedIn if they visit your profile, they send you an invitation to connect? Absolutely. Okay. Awesome. And what I would encourage you guys to do if you're watching this live or you're watching this in playback and you've enjoyed the conversation, if you're considering inviting people to Peter to connect with you on LinkedIn, please mention the interview. If there's a, a point um, in particular that resonated with you or, or some comment that he um, reflected on today, mention that in there. And I'm just loving your your LinkedIn header, Peter, because you've got, it looks like this is a graduation cap. Is that right? Yes. That's, isn't that a great picture? So that's a graduation cap of one of our, our graduates. Uh, I think it was, well, we and at least a year ago because we we're yeah. uh, in person, right? But one of the things that I'm always amazed by is our, our graduates and how they decorate their cap. I love I love looking at them and uh, I really admire some of the designs, but this one really struck me because it, it really speaks to everyone, doesn't it? Uh, yeah. You know, so here's, here's a, a graduate um, who feels they're about to change the world and they're proud of it. Yeah. And I would say the same thing about me and, uh, and our team because we have an incredible team. And so I, 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 I love that. Uh, I love that picture. That's a nice kind of uh, echo and sentiment pointing back to to you, to all the work that you guys are doing at Oakland Community College, to so that student. And I could just imagine the pride they felt that day, like wearing that and just the hope and optimism for the future and, and on earning your degree, because that's it's an accomplishment that not everybody has, you know, whether it's an associate's degree or bachelor's degree or, or moving on from there, but that sense of accomplishment is just huge. And you guys, did you did you do an online graduation the last time or how did you come through we, that process? We did, we we did our first, we had our first virtual commencement. Yeah. I have to tell you, Brenda, it was fantastic. Yeah. Um, Ken Falk and the entire team did a phenomenal job. Um, uh, we had a commencement speaker um, and um, what I really, you know, it was just really, really well done. Um, the one, thing that I keep telling the team, this is going to stick, uh, even when we are able to go face to face is we gave the graduates the opportunity um, to have, you know, their name uh, on our, uh, as part of virtual commencement up on the, on the website. Oh, nice. And um, they could put a photo mm -hmm. and or video, say a few words. Um, and I just think that really added a, a, a nice touch. Uh, I, I really do. I, I, and I'm hopeful that uh, that might be something that we can, uh, we can continue in the future. I'm sure my team is is yeah, right now. I think it was very special. 
<laughs> That's awesome. Well, thank you for sharing that, Peter. And as we start to wrap the conversation here today, I want to kind of give you the floor for any any final comments you'd like to offer. You know, anything um, happening? You know, I guess right now you're in the midst of fall right now in, in terms of like timelines for the next semester that you want to summarize or anything else I haven't asked you right now before we wrap the conversation here today. I, you know, I just remind everybody that, yes, we are in the middle of the fall semester. There are still plenty of late start classes uh, that will be happening over the upcoming weeks. And so if you're already a student and you're looking to take more classes, there are more classes available that are late start classes. If you're not a student, uh, I would encourage you to enroll, but get, you know, take, start, you know, working on the winter semester. The winter semester is going to come very quickly. Um, you, you check out OCC. It's a great place to to stay at home, stay safe, and stay on track. Um, take advantage of the Futures for Frontliners uh, free community college uh, offered by the state of Michigan. Uh, go to our website, uh, and it'll walk you through all of the things that you need to do to consider the winter semester, but start now um, because it's never too early to start registering and start that process. Classes go very, very quick. Very good. And um, if they want to reach out, admissions is the best place to start that process. Admissions, I, I think I remember that email being up on screen, but I'm also going to pop your website on here so they could go to the Thank OPC you. website and then they could probably find information about for future students, right? Yep. If, yep. And there's, there's a section there for current students, future students. Um, up on the top of the website, there's a, a, a button that you can uh, you click on that says apply now. It walks you through all of the uh, all of the steps that you need to do. Um, they're very streamlined, very easy. Um, dual enrollment, that's another thing that we didn't talk about. Uh, yeah. uh, we have a lot of high school students that okay. are taking college classes for free. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's paid through your local school district. Um, and there's a section on there for high school students that may want to take um, a college class that not only counts towards their, um, their um, uh, degree in college, but it counts towards their diploma in high school. Oh, that's smart. Double dip, double dipping. So you can yes. kind of maximize the high school experience and get a little bit of a running start, right? Into yes. Yes. It's so well. important. Yeah. And it gives you a chance to, I, I've talked to a lot of high school students that have taken advantage of our dual enrollment program. Um, not only is it just a great opportunity for them um, to receive double credit, right? Mm -hmm. um, but it relieves a lot of the anxiety of going to that's college. I, 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 so many students say, you know, I took that one class and I realized that um, I can do this. Yeah, it's not that um, much different. I mean, it's 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 a move up from high school, but it's, yeah. it's still a learning environment. And it's absolutely, so it's no different than when you went from you know when you go from middle school to high school. Slightly different, but you're ready for it. Mm -hmm. um, but it allows high school students, juniors and seniors, to dip their toe in the water uh, in a college environment, and so it, I think it really helps with the the apprehension and maybe the anxiety as they uh, they start their freshman year and uh, in that college. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Peter. This has just been an amazing conversation. Um, you you met my expectation in terms of the amount of information we covered here today. And um, I just think, you know, this whole conversation right now that's happening about college affordability and now the impact of COVID on college admissions. And I, I, I saw this meme floating around. It was talking about, you know, you can now go to Harvard for whatever X dollar the price is, or you can go on a Zoom webinar for free. You know, And it, right. it was talking about the, the value of, of your investment. And I just kind of have to reiterate that point um, that you made today. It really does make sense for, for folks. So um, for those of you guys watching, if you're interested in pursuing community college, um, you know, I, I highly recommend checking out Oakland Community College. Um, Peter and team there are doing a, an amazing job. So thank you so much, Peter, for sharing today. Thank you. Thank you, Brenda. I really appreciate the opportunity to be on. And uh, it's with you. It's always just an enjoyable conversation. So, and I've got a wonderful team. It just makes it so easy for me to brag about them. Yeah, that's right. It's great working with, and it all starts from the top too, Peter. So thank you for being a great leader for all of your team on, on their behalf. I saw so many nice comments coming in. All right, guys. So as we wrap here today, I want to ask for two favors from our viewing audience. And one is as soon as you leave, could you go back and click to share the video? Share the video, whether it's on LinkedIn, on YouTube, on Facebook. Maybe you know of somebody who's struggling with what do I want to be when I grow up, whether they're 18 or 38 or 48. You know, share the video with them. Um, there's some great messages that we talked about during the conversation here today. So please share the video with someone in your network. And the last thing is if you could please go to millermarketing.com slash subscribe. You can join my VIP email list where I'll send out LinkedIn strategy tips as well as upcoming notices about my LinkedIn Live social media pie interview series. And as we wrap here today, Peter, I'm, I think after we're done here, I think I'm going to go refill my cup of coffee and get ready for my next appointment. What's right. next on your agenda for today? You're you're at campus right now, right? 
So, well, I'm actually, yes, I'm at district office. Uh, and so there's some things that I have to work on here. And then I'm uh, back in Zoom land. Uh, <laughs> so a uh, bunch of Zoom meetings today uh, and, and meetings with the team. Uh, and then actually the next couple of days, I'm going to be at the campuses just checking out the construction sites and uh, and meeting with some of the other teams that are having some face-to-face -face meetings. Uh, we're, we're trying to take advantage of this nice weather so that we can uh, maybe do some of that outside. That's great. And when you're inside, you're wearing like the, the OCC branded face mask, right? We our, yes, we got our, our face masks and we have, you know, OCC hand sanitizer and uh, yeah. we're all set and safe. That's awesome. Well, great to see you again, Peter. Thank you so much for your time. It's been a pleasure and look forward to seeing you after COVID's all done. We can see each other in person. <laughs> Thank you, Brenda. Really appreciate the opportunity. You're welcome. And guys, as you're watching this today, if you happen to be watching this in playback, still leave a comment below. I'm going to share these links with Peter for the video. So whether it's on Facebook, on LinkedIn, or on YouTube, I'll share the playback with him. And if you do have a question about Oakland Community College, I'll make sure that that gets to his team as well so they can help you out. Um, everybody stay safe and stay healthy. Have a wonderful day. Thank you so much for joining us and we'll see you online again soon. Take care, everyone. See you soon. Bye-bye.